So I'm not a local from the Gold Coast. Um, this issue is very important right around Australia, particularly through Queensland. On the Gold Coast, I've been the spokesman for the Marine Action Group, which is concerned about a whole lot of um, local issues up there, including artificial reefs. But um, as a result of uh, my lobbying and uh, taking on the Gold Coast City Council, I was asked to step forward and represent this issue throughout Queensland as the number one in the Senate ticket for the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party. Now, the um, party is running two candidates, myself and Dr. Michael Mansfield, who is the top orthopedic surgeon in Cairns. Now, I was up in Cairns uh, a couple of weeks ago talking to people up there, and I can tell you the whole Cairns game fishing industry is beside itself with these proposals. Because if they go through, these guys are out of work. And there's a bit of history up there that I'll just relate to you, which uh, shows a bit of a pattern that's been going on in government. And first of all, the Coral Sea, uh, the zone that they're trying to mark off here, is a million square kilometres. And it's a very large body of ocean that is in pristine condition. And we do take very little from that sea in terms of um, fishing, both recreational and commercial. Yeah. Yeah, on, the, um, on the map here you'll see, um, even if you've got bad eyesight, you'll just see how big it is up on the top. So these guys have asked me to step up and save their jobs, and that's what it comes down to. And it's, it's, it's just not the jobs up in Cairns, it's the jobs right down the coast. Um, I was talking to a prawner out at the little bar and he said, look, if this goes through, uh, Tin Can Bay will close because those people will be out of jobs. Now, what we've got to look at is what, what is the real problem here? Is there a problem with marine conservation? Uh, and there is not. This is all about politics. This is all about the Greens wanting to get power in the Senate and using the fact that they can get the Labor Party elected as a tool to get their far left crazy policies through. And that's what we have to fight against. And that's what we, have, what we have to tell people who think that voting green is something good for the environment because the upshot of some of the uh, uh, repercussions of, of what will happen if this goes through is not good for the environment. Because what's going to happen is that the people who can't fish, if this goes through, the people who can't fish in the areas they're used to are all going to be over in one other area and all just completely stressing out that zone. So from a, an environmental conservation point of view, just doesn't pass the common sense test. Now let's let's talk about the Coral Sea because it's important. Now Peter Garrett, uh, you all know who Peter Garrett is, don't you? I might have the same hairdresser as him, but that's where any similarity <laughs> starts and ends. Now as far as I'm concerned, Peter Garrett should, should go back to singing because really he's doing a very bad job of handling this and he is not consulting with people properly. And we would really like to see him step out of politics and go and retire and do, do the country a favour, especially the fishermen. Now, as far as the Coral Sea goes, it's been declared a conservation zone. But um, it can't be, that shouldn't have really happened unless there was an imminent threat. There was no imminent threat to the Coral Sea. Now, Marine Queensland has gone and employed a scientist by the name of Dr. Ben Deagles. This guy is based in Brisbane. He's very bright. I had it. He's a specialist in the uh, in the health of aquatic uh, animals, and he has discredited the science that was used to get the coral sea declared as a um, conservation park. Now, the thing that gets even more sinister about this is that we have one American environmental uh, organisation that is doing a lot of lobbying um, about this whole whole exercise. Now, I'm an Australian. And I think the Americans should be over there looking after the Gulf of Mexico. They've got enough problems there without trying to stick their nose in our backyard. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to see Australia as the 51st state of, the state of uh, America. But let's, let's, let's go a little bit closer. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to two tuna bait operators um, yesterday um, on the Gold Coast. They, they've been fishing 400 miles up the coast and they've came in to unload. So I got to sit down with these guys and say, what do you really think is going on here? And they said, look, the consultants that the government has sent out don't really know, so they can't really tell us. Um, I spoke to one guy, I said, look, if you've got a, a, a fishing zone that goes out 60 nautical miles, he said, we've basically got to stay away from it at least 30 nautical miles because our lines will float into the area. So if they float into the marine park, you know, we go to jail. I mean, if you read through, um, as I've done, and this, this is on our website, which I'll tell you, it's, if you want to look up all of this information, including Dr. Ben Deagle's reports, 
Um, it's on the, the website is called fishingandlifestyle.com. And that's and spelled A and B. So fishingandlifestyle.com, all the information is there. Now, this is um, a report that uh, is in the, that's been commissioned for uh, Garrett. And on the back it says that uh, basically the government doesn't have to pay any compensation because it, um, it doesn't guarantee uh, any right to the resource for these people. So I put that to this tuna boat guy and I said, what do you think of that? And he just about swallowed his tongue. He said, I'd pay $2,000 a month to go out there just for the right to fish. I put a million dollars of my money, all my money into my boat and this guy says I can't fish out there. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. You know, there's, there's no science to support it. The fact is that we have the most highly regulated fisheries in the world with the least amount of harvest. And, um, and I'll, I'll quote a fellow, uh, we do have a scientist up in Townsville, his name is Dr. Walter Stark. He's an independent scientist, he doesn't take uh, grants from anybody. And he um, is a real thorn in the side of the environmentalists because he knows what he's talking about. And basically um, what he says is that uh, in reef systems, the average sustainable yield is about 4,000 kilos per square kilometre of fish taken out of the area. Uh, in Australia, we are taking nine kilograms uh, per year. So, um, you know, th this is not about fishing. It's not about conservation. It's about politics. And what you have to do is get out there and tell all of your friends not to vote for the Greens. And unfortunately, because they've done a deal with Labor, you can't vote for Labor. Now, I represent, I represent <coughs> Queensland. I'm running for the Senate there. And for those people, that's probably not too many. Do we have any Queenslanders in the room? Right, there's at least three or four votes I've got tonight for the drive down, which is good. But um, I, I will drive this issue up and down the coast. I was up at Gympie uh, last weekend, as was um, uh, Senator Ron Boswell. And, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll quote something that came out that night. Uh, Senator Nigel Scullion came down from the Northern Territory, and we had 300 locals rolled up on a very kind, very cold night to listen. And uh, Nigel Scullion said, yeah, uh, no take zone. We had a river in the Northern Territory uh, that we declared as a no take zone. We come, came back one year later and what happened? There were half the fish there, twice the size. So, you know, as, as you look at all of these issues and, and you find that there's, there's look, the, the Greens might think, you know, they want that uh, conservation is great when it comes to locking up national parks. But what actually happens in the sea is very different. And that's what they don't seem to understand. They might have a lot of experience, um, you know, hugging the trees, but when it comes to marine zones, you need to get out and talk to the people, the professionals like, like I have. And I'll give you another example. One of the guys I spoke to um, is an abalone farmer on the, uh, he does abalone uh, uh, fishing on the south coast of New South Wales. The no tape zone down there is full of sea urchins. The area that's being fished and managed in the abalone, he said, we've got the highest recruitment of abalone in years. And because the fishery is being managed, it is actually more healthy than the no-take zone. Now, when it comes to no-take zones, it is really a no-sense zone when it comes down to it. Because if you want to uh, help, the, air, help the, the marine environment, what you need to do is get all the greenies out on the, on the creek banks and get them to start planting trees to stop the silt runoff. Uh, stop the pollution. That's what needs to happen to the marine environment. In terms of the amount of fish that we're taking out of the marine environment, it is so small compared to other parts of the world, it does not warrant these draconian measures. So, unfortunately, Peter Garrett doesn't want to come out and put his cards on the table before the election. He wants all this to go away. He's not going to commit himself. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. So what we have to do is make sure that Peter Garrett and all his mates aren't there after the 21st of August. That's all it comes to Thank you very much. A uh, very passionate uh, little speech there. But uh, I noticed there's a bit of talk up the back there.